Hello, welcome, happy Sunday. I'm glad to see you here. I know I'm a little bit early, but it gives people a time to get the notice and then come on in. So while I'm here, we'll just hang out a bit. Dandy decided he wanted to be in here today, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Who knows, he may decide he wants to go back out too. You never know with him. But for a while, we're gonna leave him here and just see how he does. Hello, how are you? Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> it says here I've got, oh, Iron Fire Horse. Good morning or afternoon, actually. It's good to see you here. Welcome, welcome. I'm hoping that Dave should be in just in a minute. How are you and how is your garden growing, dear heart? It's good to see you. By the way, I was visiting with some people online this morning during Kay Kittrell's um, live stream, and it turns out they're getting snow up in uh, Washington State. It's kind of early for that. Peace of Heaven Farmstead, good to see you. Welcome. Ah, Dave made it. Good. Hi, hon. Yeah, they were saying they've had snow up in uh, Washington State already. I thought that was kind of a little early for that, but maybe not. Deborah E. and Allie Oakley, hi, welcome. Good to see you. Oh, thank you, peace of heaven. This is my baby. His name is Gandy. Um, he's about six years old, and he is an absolute rotten mess. I have unfortunately made him stinky rotten. <laughs> But he loves his mama, and he is a Maui Sunrise Macaw, which is a hybrid of a hybrid. I never know what he's going to do, but he loves to come and be with mama. So, no, you don't need to give mama kisses right now. Anyway, he was talking before y'all came on. No, Gandhi. It's Gandalf, but I call him Gandhi for short. G-A-N-D-Y. You have a bird on your shoulder too, Laura? Cool. Well, who do you have on your shoulder? Gandalf is terrific. Yes, he has quite a long name, but I just call him Gandy. And he answers to it. <laughs> he is a truly rotten bird. But all three of our boys are, are pretty spoiled. We have three macaws, like I've told you before. Gandhi is the youngest. The other two are blue and golds, which are the traditional um, pirate birds that you see all the time. Let's see. Oh, I knew that Gandalf, I need to get my earphones. Oh, okay. Well, go get your earphones, darling, so you can hear us. But anyway, the two blue and golds are also very, very spoiled. No, you stay up on Mama's shoulder. No, no, you stay up on my shoulder. He wants to get down and walk around and play with the keyboard, but I'm not going to let him do that. It's too hard to do this when he's out playing on the keyboard. <laughs> he's got more colors than any bird I've known in a long time. A lesser sulfur-crested cockatoo. Oh, my goodness. You've been pet-sitting for two years? Hmm. Hi, Bandana Grandma. Good to see you. Uh, Laura, I think maybe you have a new pet. I don't think you're sitting anymore. <laughs> Let's see. Allie. Allie says he's green and red. He's ready for... Oh, who's green and red and ready for Christmas? I'm sorry. I missed that, Allie. Yeah. Susie, I'm so glad you made it. That's wonderful. Yeah, I know. I love you. You got to stay on mama's shoulder today. No, you cannot go walking down. No, I'm not going to let you walk around on the keyboard. No, 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 no. Hey. Well, he's determined, isn't he? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he's actually orange and green and blue and yellow. He has a little red on his forehead right up here, up top above his beak, but he's not really red. Oh, you're so stinky. You be sweet. You be sweet. 
I agree with you. Iron Fire Horse says she thinks the birds are incredible. They make wonderful companion animals. They really do. Um, they have their own personalities. They have their own likes and dislikes. And this one can hold a grudge. So absolutely are wonderful. Oh, my goodness, Laura, that's so that's such a shame. <laughs> Sounds to me like you've got a baby now. Hey. Either you settle down or I'm going to go put you back on your cage. If you want to stay in here with Mama, you got to be nice. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, Casey. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Has Texas time changed? I remember these live streams. No. Uh, well, let's see. We did fall back one one hour, so and we have daylight savings time, and then we go back to regular time. So that may be what you're talking about, Roberta. This guy, if he gets the right care, could live to be over a hundred. They do live well. Bless you. They do live a long time if they're cared for right. Some of them do, some of them don't. I'm hoping this one will live a long time. But if he lives to be a hundred, he will outlive me by a long time. D90. Well, hi, how are you doing? And you're right, it has been a long time. I'm actually doing pretty well. Hello, Miss Brendan from Duncan 1900. It's good to see you too. My goodness, we got a lot of folks coming in. Mama's in the garden. Hi, girl. It's good to see you. We started a little bit early. Um, it takes a while for folks to get messages, so I try to start just a little early so everybody can be here by one. You know, Laura, I had a son Conyer, excuse me, a son Conyer for a while, and she was beautiful. But I just couldn't, ha didn't have time to take care of this one, the two blue and golds, and her. And I found her a wonderful home with a woman who just adores her and has worked with her and turned her into a wonderful companion as well. So, yeah. Daylight savings. Casey says daylight savings hardly notices it. It's all automatic. You're right, but it's still, I have to think about it sometimes. So, oh, let's see, Brenda. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of folks. Oh, what are you being so fussy about? What are you being so fussy about? When I first signed on this morning, he was sitting there talking to the bird on the screen. He kept saying, hello, hello. So, I guess he's grumpy that the bird on the screen didn't say hello back. No, no, you get back up on my shoulder. Go on. Thank you. No, you stay up there for a while. <laughs> you know, Laura, you say that your bird is plucked and is mostly naked. Gandy is, came to us a little plucked, but he has been really doing a number on himself lately. And I'm a little concerned about him. His chest. Right under here is all plucked now and under his wings. And oops, <laughs> sorry about that. And then on his wings itself over here, he's starting to pluck. I'm not sure what we're going to do about it. He just seems to <coughs> seems to want to pluck and I'm not sure why. No, no. <coughs> Ouch. Okay, guys, I will be right back. He's just being too much of a pain. Uh, I'm going to go put him down. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. I hated to do it. He really wanted to be here, but 
he also really wanted to walk on my keyboard and I just can't do that while I'm trying to have a live stream. Unfortunately, when I put him on his cage, he didn't want that either. And he let me know I now have a new wound. But when you have big birds, you're going to you're going to bleed. So it's not a biggie. Just one of those things that they do. Now, what's going on that I missed while I went and put the silly bird away? Uh, let's see. Mama's in the garden says, how is everybody's day so far? Mine has been delightful. Um, I, got, I got to sleep in late. I didn't get up until after 7 o'clock, which is pretty late for me. Um, I've been on three live streams so far this morning and really enjoyed that. I'm hoping. Ah, hi, Celtic Bear. Good to see you. Um, I'm really hoping that. Uh, oh, sorry about that. I'm hoping that we're going to have some new visitors because one of the people that I moderate for on Sunday mornings before my own stream is Kay Kittrell of the Late Bloomers Garden. And uh, she invited everyone to come over here today. So we may have some new friends coming by. Um, Laura Gandy has been doing that too. Uh, Laura says that her bird plucked her feathers so long that the, the feathers won't grow back. And Gandy has done that on his chest right across here where I showed you earlier. And uh, under his wings, his sides are just naked. There are no feathers under there at all. So I have a feeling he's going to be without feathers in a lot of spaces too, unfortunately. Let's see. Casey, you're doing very well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That is super. I'm sorry, I'm drippy over here. <laughs> That'll quit in a few minutes. I just don't want it to drip on my white, my white shorts. Where is everybody from? How many different nationalities we got in the house? You know, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'm from Texas. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Mama's in the garden. It's from Scotland, and you're in your jammies. Well. I hate to admit this, but I just got out of my jammies and got dressed. I've had a very lazy day. When you're uh, moderating, you don't get seen, so you can do that in your jammies, and I really enjoy that. <laughs> Jerusalem artichokes. I've heard of Jerusalem artichokes, but I have no idea about them. McCoy's Elk, Oak Hill Farms. I'm so glad you came today. It's good to see you. You got rain? We've been getting a little bit of rain, but not a lot. <coughs> Pardon me. Roberta is from Canada. McCoy's is from Minnesota. Iron Fire Horse from Ontario. Speaking of Canada, you guys, um, I was told by someone just recently that you all celebrate Thanksgiving in the middle of October. And if that is true, I have been thinking about doing some special videos on some of the Thanksgiving dishes that I cook for my family. And I was wondering if y'all would be interested in that. Uh, let me know. Um, I'm not sure what all I'll do, but I'll figure out something. Lisa Johnson says, once you grow Jerusalem artichokes, you always have them. Sounds like uh, some of the things in my garden. <laughs> Let's see, iron four. That's true, our Thanksgiving is in October. Okay, uh, what's Iron Fire Horse, what is a traditional Thanksgiving dinner like for Canadians? I know um, here in Texas, we usually have ham or turkey, but we also have tamales to uh, give host to some of our Hispanic friends. We have tamales at almost every big family gathering in, in a lot of families here. So what, what, guys, what do you guys have as a traditional Thanksgiving dinner? Laura says hers are in pots and they take a lot of water. Are you still talking about Jerusalem artichokes? Hmm. You know, people have been talking about having lots of harvesting. My tomatoes have just started a second growth spurt, so I'm hoping I get some before it gets cold. Roberta says it's snowing. Wow. Let's see, Roberta says, it's snowing there. Should be interested in food type videos. Ham or turkey is usually traditional. Well, okay, that's pretty traditional here. Mama's in the garden, says I unpack a grocery delivery, did some laundry, took the kids to visit her mom. 
went to buy a new iron and got a new skirt, and now you're done. So that sounds like a busy day already. Celtic Bear says Thanksgiving like turkey, stuffed squash, creamed onions, and pies. Now, I've never had stuffed squash nor creamed onions. I do make a, a, a squash casserole sometimes, but I've never had stuffed squash. What do you stuff it with? Um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, I make a lot of sweet potato dishes. KC, of course, we don't have Thanksgiving here in New Zealand. The closest holiday to that time here is Christmas, where regularly a family lunch is the main event. Then a trip to the beach. Oh, it's been a long time since I've been to the beach, KC. I've lived, grew up on the Texas Gulf Coast. I loved it. But I moved inland when with my parents when I was 14, and I have not lived anywhere near the beach since, and I really kind of miss it. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm so sorry. Just Celtic berry, just plain squash? Okay, do you like bake it or boil it, or what do you do, Celtic? Uh, Mama's in the Garden says, Thanksgiving food videos, especially dressing and stuffing. Okay. Well, I usually make my, my, my dressings and stuffings from scratch, so I'll have to make some bread in order to have the breadcrumbs and all of that. But if that's what you guys would like, I'll do some. Let's see. Iron Fire has two turkey, root vegetables of all types, gravy, stuffing, pumpkin pie, apple pie, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I do make pumpkin pies. I don't know if y'all have seen my pumpkin pie from last year, but I made it from scratch. Oh, bake, break squash with brown sugar. David had me do squash like that one year. I don't remember what kind of squash it was, but it was quite good. That's a shame to say, David, I'm glad you amended that. I could have been very offended. I'm in Auckland in the North Island. Oh, okay. <laughs> McCoy's Oak Hill Farm says she's getting hungry. <laughs> that's a danger when you watch my videos. Often we get to talking about food and that's as far as it goes. We just go to town with food. Um, I don't know if any of you fo follow Kay Kittrell, but there's a possibility that she's going to be in Texas over the holidays. And if she is, we may have a gathering here at the house and do a traditional Texas um, Thanksgiving or Christmas, depending on when she gets here. And if we do, we'll probably do some videos built around that. Lisa Johnson says you have appetizers, cranberry relish, some potatoes. Haven't been able to find a meat that everyone really wants, but the appetizers are enough to fill everyone up anyway. Okay. You know, Lisa, one year we had barbecue for Thanksgiving, and it was really very good. McCoy's Oak Hill Farm says you need to make some banana bread, and today's a good day. Whoa, everything just jumped in there. Let's see. Green Raven, you have sauerkraut anytime you... Sauerkraut with turkey, that's an interesting combination. Oh, Casey likes cake hitrell too. Yeah, I'm, her, her son is moving about 70 miles up the road from me, and she's going to be coming to visit him several times, and she and I want to hook up. And we found out today there's like eight or nine other people within a, about a 50-mile radius of where we are. So we're thinking about maybe a get-together of some kind, whether it's here at the house or at a restaurant or what, I don't know. But we've been thinking about that kind of a thing. Duncan1900 says, I use butternut squash instead of pumpkin in my pies. It tastes like pumpkin pie with a little nutty flavor. Butternut squash is one of the ones that I have baked before but never made a pie out of. That sounds really interesting. I might try that. Let's see. Iron Fire Horse, I keep it basic, lots of butter with root vegetables. Iron Fire Horse, last week I made a big pan of carrots. And I put them in a, peeled them and cut them and put them in a 9 by 13 pan, covered them with chicken broth that I made from home and baked them. And they are so good. I just absolutely love them. 
um, German side of the family for the sauerkraut. I love, I like sauerkraut. I can't say I love it because I haven't been able to manage to make it but one time where it turned out. But um, I've just never thought of putting it with turkey. It's a very interesting idea. I may have to try that. Let's see. KC says, that's fantastic. Whatever you do, try to get a video. Definitely, whatever we do, there will be at least a video and maybe even a live stream. I don't know, but definitely. Celtic Bear, I usually do sauerkraut with pork or coleslaw with pork. Deborah E says, it's very cool there today. 44. Good day for a big pot of soup. Deborah E, pots of soup and crusty bread are what I use to win David's heart. He likes them. He loves soup. He loves crusty bread to sop up all the juice. And that's how I caught him. I cooked that for him several times and he just fell in love with the food and then decided he liked me. <laughs> Lisa Johnson says, any winter squash is good substitute for pumpkin in anything. After all, pumpkin is just a squash. That is true. Iron Firehorse says you use canned pumpkin. There's nothing wrong with canned pumpkin. I have, Oh, hi, Lynx Acres. Good to see you. The only reason why I say I make my pumpkin from scratch is because there's a church near us that during um, October has a big um, pumpkin patch. And on the first day of November, they open that pumpkin patch up and people can come and take away as many pumpkins as they can carry. And I am so thrifty that I go and get them and bring them home, bake them and either dehydrate them or cook with them or can them. So I do that. Yeah, chicken broth for vegetables. I use a lot iron fire horse. I like the riches it gives without actually giving it a strong flavor. It just seems to embellish on the flavor that's already there. Mama's in the garden said, my husband likes sauerkraut and kielbasa. I love kielbasa and I would probably like it with sauerkraut. I probably would. I've just recently in the last five or six years, learned to eat sauerkraut. Um, as a child growing up, I didn't. My parents didn't make pickled much of anything or fermented food at all, and so I didn't learn about it. And when I was raising my kids, I didn't either. So I've just recently started eating it. I started off with kombucha, which I still am not real fond of, but I'm liking other things. So let's see. Link Acres, you went to Birth Without Fear conference yesterday, and it was. I was going to ask you about that. I heard some really good things about that, Link Acres. I'm glad to know you thought it was good too. Let's see, Laura. I use canned pumpkin all year to make various types of pumpkin custard. I like pie filling, no crustless, and less sugar. Laura, I do that too, and I also use my dehydrated pumpkin when I do that. I keep. I got a 10 pound pump, no, 20 pound pumpkin in a pint jar last year because I dehydrated it and then powdered it. So I had all kinds of pumpkin and I really like being able to do that. It takes less room on the shelf and it will taste really good once it's been rehydrated. Um, add fruit to my kombucha on the second ferment. Actually McCoy's, it's not the flavor that bothers me. I don't do well with carbonated products. Um, the little flap in your throat that allows air to come up and allows you to belch doesn't work right in my throat and when I get a lot of gas built up down in there it becomes painful so I stay away from most carbonated things and kombucha was one of them that really upset me so it tastes great it just doesn't like me too well <laughs> let's see iron fire horse says it's funny people say they hate parsnips then they say yum What's that spice you have here? And <laughs> salt and pepper. That's it. You know, I had never tasted parsnips. <clears throat> Excuse me. I never tasted parsnips until last year. And I'm not sure if I like them or not. I had an opportunity to try them once in place of turnips. And it wasn't bad, but it wasn't what I was expecting either. So I don't know. Let's see. Lynx Acres is the last one in Canada. Oh, yeah. I've been told some really good things about it. I'm glad you got to go. Deborah E says, I like to can pumpkin to put in my pet food. I do that too, Deborah. Um, I make so much of it because I get all those free pumpkins. My dog and my cat love pumpkin in their food. It is so good for them. 
that tried using fresh pumpkins for pies, way too much liquid to it. Yeah, um, I bake mine before I use them, and that gets rid of a lot of the liquids, and then I cut down the uh, other liquids. I don't use as much. For instance, I'll use um, powdered milk instead of liquid milk. Sometimes that seems to help, too. Um, I also dehydrate eggs, and I use powdered eggs instead of liquid eggs, and that helps. McCoy's Oak, Mill, Oak Hill Farm, oh my, kombucha is flat until I do a second ferment. My kombucha was so bubbly on the first ferment three days after I started it. I thought it was going to explode. I really did. It kind of scared me. Celtic bear kombucha tastes sour to me. I don't do a carbonated anything. I don't either, Iron Fire Horse. I just... It doesn't work for me. Lynx Acres said we had a really good conversation on postpartum self-care, self-love, body positivity, which aren't the same thing, and that men are also affected by postpartum period and need support. Yes, that is something I did not find out about until my second child came along, and I discovered at that point my husband went through a postpartum depression, and it was very difficult. I didn't have the depression, but he did. Let's see. Oh, thank you, David. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, he says. Um, Iron Firehorse, I grate parsnips and add it to other veggies. I don't like it on its own. Well, what I was doing, um, I made um, a meat pie. And in this pie, you usually use turnips, but I couldn't get turnips. And I found some parsnips, and I was told by the man at the grocery that you could substitute. So I did, made it the same way. It wasn't a bad flavor. It was just different from what I was expecting. And I haven't done it again because I've always been able to get the turnips instead. Oh, Link Sakers, you got her book. Oh, that is so cool. That'll be a wonderful thing to remember. Let's see, Iron Firehorse. I had both of my children at home. I had neither of my children at home, but it's probably a good thing. My first one I might have been able to do, but my second one I had cancer uh, while I was carrying her. And we had to go through a long series of things, and it was better for me to do that in the hospital. KC, symptoms of joining in on an Inside Kate Kitchen live stream. A big smile, a whole lot of wisdom, and hunger. Oh, KC, you're so sweet. Thank you. That's cute. McCoy's not good. Yeah, it was a bad situation, but I'm better. As a matter of fact, I've eaten cancer twice now since then. Video on dehydrating eggs. I've done one, Green. Uh, Laura, you might want to look back and see. I have done one on dehydrating eggs. It's very easy to do, and it turns out beautifully. It makes it a lot easier to save. As a matter of fact, I was given about 12 dozen eggs recently. I need to get in there and dehydrate them today. Biggest secret I can tell you on dehydrating eggs is put them in the blender first and whip them up, get lots of air in it. They dehydrate more easily, and um, that when they're dry, they break up and go into a jar very quickly and easily that way. So it's it's good thing to do, and it, it really is a great way to save room and have eggs all the time. Let's see, Iron Fire Hearts. Oh, no, okay, I can't imagine. Oh, yes. Yeah. The Big C and I have been friends for a while now. I try not to worry about it anymore. I've lived through it twice, gone through the um, chemo and radiation and all of that, and I'm here. So God's had something for me to do still, I guess. That's all I can say, because I don't know why I managed through if he didn't do it. Let's see. Quite though, Kill, I'm glad you have beaten cancer. I know my mom didn't beat cancer. Um, I'm sorry to hear that your mom didn't beat cancer, McCoy's. That's really sad. My mom had breast cancer six months before I found out I had breast cancer. So we went through a lot of it together and supported each other. That was a real blessing. Um, we both survived. My mom survived. As a matter of fact, my mom is 90 now, and she and my stepdad live in their home still. They still drive themselves around. They still live independently. I am truly, truly blessed. 
Laura says, thanks, I'm trying to freeze cooked eggs, scrambled and fried. Uh, Laura, one of the good things about dehydrating eggs is when you don't put it, you don't put milk or anything in it, but when you rehydrate it, you just add um, hot water and when it's rehydrated, they're already scrambled. All you have to do is add your spices and throw them in the pan and you've got scrambled eggs. So it's really easy. And if you're going to cook with it, that's easy too, because you've already got it. You add the water, you've got your eggs. I think it's a quarter. Of, I'd have to look up the measurements for sure, but I think it's a quarter of a cup of hot water and two tablespoons of powder makes an egg, a large egg. So it worked out. Oh, Deborah, I answered your question. I didn't even know you'd asked it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Casey, amen to that, Kate. God's in it for you. You've got a purpose. Maybe it's these videos. Who knows? I mean, look at the community you've built here and the joy you bring us. Thank you, Casey. I appreciate that. Like I said last week, you guys are like family to me. You're more than friends, even though we've not met face to face. You're important to me. I pray for you. I care about what happens to you. And I truly believe that you care about what happens to David and me. I really do. It's really important. Um, these live streams, the, the internet has become something very, very important. I hear a lot of people say the internet is bad. You don't have any people contact and all this kind of stuff. I disagree. I disagree entirely. I have wonderful friends that I've met on the internet that I will never meet face to face, but they're very important to me. You guys, you're extremely important to me, and I probably will never meet most of you face to face, but we've met heart to heart, and to me, that's the important part. Let's see. Dave said, oh, my mom scared us badly. Yeah, she didn't answer the phone for several days. She couldn't find her phone. She lost it that I went over to check on both of them. Yeah, my dad, my stepdad, I call him dad, my dad had turned the phone ringer off on his phone when he went to the doctor's office and forgot to turn it back on. And mom had lost her phone. So neither one of them were answering and I got kind of panicky. My sister who lives about 200 miles away called me and she'd been trying to reach him for days. So I jumped in the car and went over there. They were fine. They had no idea anybody had been trying to reach him. So they got their phones back on and turned up and all of that. And so we're okay, but, and they were very apologetic. They didn't mean to upset us, so, so you know, it was, it was okay, but it kind of scared us. Let's see. McCoy's, oh, they're, t good. David and McCoy's are talking about having lost relatives. And, yeah, I lost my dad. I lost my first husband. I lost him to pancreatic cancer. I lost my dad to COPD. I've lost my grandfather to cancer. I lost my grandmother to stomach cancer. Lots of cancer in my family. Two sisters. One died of cancer, systemic cancer. The other died of a massive heart attack. Both of them younger than me. One by two years and one by nine years. There are two of us of the four left. So I don't know. But like I said earlier, God's got a plan for me. He keeps me around until he's done with me. And then he'll take me home. No matter when that is, I'm I'm happy to be here until he's ready for me to go home. Then I'll be happy to be there. Let's see. Several Iron Fire Horse said several people that met here are real friends for me. I agree that. Casey says, I love how you put it. We've met maybe not face to face, but heart to heart. That's wonderful. You know, Dave and I met heart to heart long before we ever met face to face. We met on the internet way before you had pictures and things like that. It was just text when we met, and it was on the internet. Deborah e says, I can find like-minded people online. Yes, that that is. When we first started chatting online, it was a little scary because you couldn't see anybody. All you had was the words, and there were a lot of people that were putting things out there that were not them and not right. But we both found out, if you just kept trying, you could find people that were like you, that were good people, good-hearted people that you could be friends with. So, yes, there are a lot of like-minded people out here now, thank goodness. 
Roberta says, unfortunately, almost everyone has passed away from either cancer or heart attack. Yeah. Roberta, cancer is, I think, I haven't read anything about it lately, but I think it's probably the number one killer in the world, or at least in the U.S. Um, hmm. Yeah, Dave says, we were one of the first online relationships. I know that we were one of the first online relationships that I knew anything about. I'd met a lot of folks, but had not heard of any online relationships. Deborah E., you met your hubby online too? That's great. Tell us about it. I am Firehorse. That's awesome. I didn't know you met online. That's cool. And so long ago. Yeah, it was long ago. We met in 1996. So it's been a while. <laughs> Uh, Dave says there's a book in how she and I met. I pulled him out of a very dark time. I was very blessed to meet him at the right time. We both have thanked God for that time many times over. Not that he had to go through a bad time, but that he put us together at the same place at the same time. Mama's Garden. As an introvert, I like the fact that online I can take a step back when I need to. I agree. I agree, Mama's Garden. That is a real blessing. And if you're talking with someone online and you feel uncomfortable, you can step back. You can hit the off button, so to speak, and everything's fine. And you met your husband online, too? Uh, that's cool. Lynx Acres met her husband through work. I met my first husband in high school. So... <laughs> Casey says, Dave and I should write a book. Oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. I'm not a writer. That's Dave. I'll talk, but I don't write. Well, I do write, but just not like he does. He's a wonderful writer. Let's see. McCoy's Oak Hill said, not knowing Kate real well, I get that from her. I missed that. I don't didn't hear what you said. Celtic Burr, I'm going to log off. Sign Celtic Bear, I hope you feel better. Get some steam going. Maybe that'll help. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. I hope you feel better today. Let's see. Oh, yes, Dave has, has written a book. Actually, he's written a couple, but only one that he's tried to do anything with. I tell him all the time he should be writing books. He has so much to say. Matter of fact, he does such a good job with it that locally he's known as the bard of our city because he he tells stories and he writes things and people just love hearing what he has to say. So I agree. My mother's story makes it a bit complicated. Plus, she also got diagnosed with Lyme. Oh, di Lyme is such an awful thing. I'm sorry to hear it. Let's stream games and entertainment. Hello, let's stream games and entertainment. It's good to see you. I'm glad you joined us. I know you're new here, or at least this name is new here. Um, welcome. Please join us. We're just talking about whatever comes to mind. Let's see. Link Thaker says, some conversation on internet groups are very interesting. That is true. That is very true. Uh, Duncan said, Celtic bear, make tea out of rosemary, sage, and thyme, then inhale the steam. It'll help. Good idea. Uh, Casey, yes, like Shakespeare, the bard. That's exactly right. And he is excellent at his writing. Uh, when you read what he said, it's like you're talking to him. You can hear him. He's, he writes the way he talks, and he's very, very good. Iron Firehorse, the bard, that's a great title to have for sure. Yes, it is. I agree. I'm actually really proud of his of his writing ability and the fact that he is finally getting some recognition for it because he does such a beautiful job and people say really good things about what he says. So I am Firehorse. I'm an avid reader as well. I read constantly. If I'm not working or doing something, I'm reading. So this is one of my steps away from books. <laughs> Deborah E., getting things gathered up to make a batch of fire cider for winter. ASL Harvard Homestead, hi! I haven't seen you in a couple of days. Thank you for joining us. I'm good to see. I'm glad to see you here. 
David Montgomery links. I don't know who David Montgomery is. What kind of books are those? Let's see. Ah, he's going to go get the link. I hope y'all will really like his book. And his writing is really, really super. Let's see. Debra, I always have a couple of books going at the same time. So do I, Debra. And now that I've got uh, Kindle on my phone, I've got 400 and something books in my personal library, and I just pop from one to the next all the time. Um, Mama's in the Garden, I do wonder what some people did before online groups. When they ask questions like, is the dump open today? How did they cope? Uh, it's a good question. I don't remember. Well, I do remember when we didn't have online groups, but I was a little more connected person to person, but not that much because even before the internet, I only had a couple of really close friends. We talked every day, but that was it. I didn't have a lot of reaching out time. But then I was raising two daughters and uh, my husband at the time was not involved in raising our kids. He worked a lot and spent his time doing other things, excuse me. So I just didn't reach out like I do now. Um, McCoy's Oak Hill says, I've been reading herbal books lately along with herbal class. I've been thinking about taking some books and becoming an herbo herbologist. Is that the word? Herbalist? I'm not sure what it's called, but I've been thinking about it. Duncan, I've never been one to write letters. I, I you know, there are a lot of folks out there who do. Um, put me in front of a keyboard and I'll type you a letter in no time. But my typing speed for most of my adult life was 120 words per minute or better with no errors. So I would sit down and think and look up and it would be on the on the screen as a letter. So let's see, Iron Fire Horse, it's hard to say, Casey, philosophy, politics, fantasy, biography, oh, the kind of books you read. Mama's in the garden. Some people just seem to lack initiative to find things out for themselves. That's true. That's true. And some people are truly clueless about where to begin looking for information. Of course, it is an herbalist. Thank you. Thank you. Linksaker says, David Montgomery is fascinating. He gives talks at conferences, too. He's got dirt, the erosion of civilization, growing a revolution, bringing, back, bringing our soil back to life. That's something that's pretty important. I, I'm trying to do that on my two acres, but it's kind of hard since I don't have a lot of time nor strength anymore. Um, McCoy says, I've been working with herbs for about 25 years, but I'm always learning. I've finally been able to find some online classes that are affordable and doable. I, um, I do a lot of research online and I take notes and I copy paste things and I've got probably three three ring notebooks full of stuff that I've copied from here and there. Dave says he's back. There's the link. Okay, y'all be sure and check him out. It's really great. Iron Fire Horse, I just finished The Testament, the sequel to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I read all of her books. She's one of she's from my area and I love her. I read The Handmaid's Tale. I've not, I don't think I've read the Testaments yet. The Hidden Half of Nature, The Microbial Roots of Life and Health, Rocks Don't Die, A Geologist Investigates Noah's Flood, and a few others. Those sound fascinating, Lynx. That really sounds neat. Chelsea Psychic Garden. What is the Chelsea, the Chelsea Garden? I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Lynx Acres says, Gabe Brown has from dirt to soil, and that's good too. I've been trying to do some um, amending my soil, but trying to do it naturally. Um, planting cover crops, covering things up with wood chips and that they break down and things like that. So um, I guess I'm sort of making soil. I do have a huge, huge compost pile. It, I fill it up to about four and a half to five feet deep, wait a few months, it breaks down, and I start over again. So I've got a lot of good compost under there. I just need to start using it. Let's see. 
Green Raven says around here, the Groupon coupon thing offers a half coupon for an online herbal course. I've thought about it, but want to invest in classes. You know, that's a good idea. Um, I may be doing, I, I swore when I left high school, I'd never go back to school. I didn't want to be a s official student. I don't enjoy sitting in classrooms and having people lecture to me. But let me sit down with books and the, and the uh, computer. I love that. I really, really enjoy it. Maybe I would do okay with an online course because you can do it when you want to and turn it off when you want to. Handmaid's Tale seemed to be quite important right now. I've not read it yet, but it is. Do read it, Casey. It's very, it's a very interesting and unusual look at things. Uh, Iron Firehorse, I just read the Handmaid's, reread it for the sixth time. Hmm. That's a lot of times reading something. Mama's in the Garden, it's in London. It's a centuries old apothecary's garden dedicated to studying medicinal plants. That's cool. If I go, if I ever get to London, I will definitely try it. Let's see. I lost the place again. Let's see. Link's Acres sounds very interesting. I'm sorry. I'm getting all kinds of notices here. I'm having to click out so I can read your comments. Let's see. Link's Acres, you should look up the videos. Not not till on the Plains 2018, David Montgomery and Anne. If you go to my channel, I have several playlists of videos. I will definitely look that up. Thank you, Links. That's that's very good information. I haven't watched the TV, the series on TV. It's quite more embellishment from the book. Hmm. Always McCoy's Oak Hill. It gives more flexibility to the online classes and books. I know. I could not take Google classes due to distance and expense and time. <clears throat> McCoy's. That's a part of what I feel too. Um, the expense has always been a real problem for me. Um, I don't like to spend money on myself. Uh, now I'll put money into other people quickly, but I don't spend it on myself very easily. Um, I do want to learn more about herbs, but right now I've got so much I'm learning just from what I can uh, copy and paste out of the internet. I'm not sure I'm not sure if I'm going to take a class or not, to be honest. I really don't know. Um, Links Acres, I really liked Tipping Points by Christine Jones and all the ones by Jonathan Lundgren are fascinating. He's an entomologist, PhD. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I agree, David. It does sound like she studies a lot in depth. That's amazing. Wow. Now, I just get online and go, okay, Google, tell me about this. <laughs> I agree, Iron Fire Horse. That does sound like an interesting place to go. Yeah, Dave says, keep in mind, it's, it's all amateur, but I tell you, if you read it, you'll be amazed. It doesn't look am amateur to me at all. Yeah, Length Acres, I agree. Conferences, you do learn a lot. Uh, when I was doing a lot of um, paper crafting, I would go to the conferences and they would show you things and give you an opportunity to put what they showed you into practice. I learned a lot about paper crafting when I was doing that. Angel Herbs, hello from Florida. So glad I caught you. Hello, angels. Thank you for joining us. It's good to see you here. We're talking about whatever comes to mind. Right now, we're talking about learning about herbs and how to use them. I'm really glad you joined us. With a name like Angel's Herbs, I bet you probably know a little something about herbs. McCoy's likes the on here online classes because they've been flexible and picking up stuff I had wondered about and couldn't find in earlier books. Yep. KC, I have an idea for a live stream for you for the future. What would you tell your 19-year-old self? I'd really benefit from the wisdom from that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'd have to think about that, Casey. I would really have to think about that a lot. There's all kinds of things that I would tell my 19-year-old self. It would probably make a huge difference 
in what happened. I'm not sure I would want to make a difference because I honestly believe that what I did and how I lived and the things I experienced made me who I am today. But there probably were some things that I could have done without doing and some things that I should have done that I didn't. So I'm going to think about that one. That's a great idea. Iron Firehorse. I studied The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Not familiar with the other one. Angel's Herbs says, I love herbs just a little and I love to keep learning. Yeah, me too. Me too. I love it too. Lynx Budgeting. Number one good thing. That's a real good idea, Lynx. Uh, I agree. Budgeting and money handling is very important. Iron Firehouse. I know what I would say to my 19-year-old self. Quit smoking. Do you know I did not smoke until I was over 40 years old? And then I started smoking for a while and gave it up. And I gave it up for about 12 years, maybe. And then started smoking again. Smoked for maybe six months, and I gave it up again. And I don't have any desire to smoke anymore. It's just just one of those things. I, I had to try it. I thought I enjoyed it. I gave it up because my doctor said it was bad. A few years later, I thought, I want one cigarette. I've not had a cigarette in forever. I want one. I smoked one. One led to one pack. One pack led to one carton. My doctor looked at me and said, quit smoking, and I did. <laughs> so... Quit smoking or don't start smoking is a real good piece of advice. I think another thing I would have said is don't be afraid. Trust the Lord. He's take, he'll take care of you. From looking back, I can tell that he did take care of me and will continue. So that's a real good one, too. McCoy's Hell Kill says, oh, no, Kate, I couldn't imagine even starting to smoke. I grew up around people who did. I didn't. Neither my dad. Well, my dad smoked for a little while when I was younger, but... Really, my folks didn't smoke. My dad would puff on a pipe, but that's different. Um, save, save, save. Yeah, save is important. It really is. Iron Fire Horse, I started early as a young teenage immigrant. Lynn Saker said, I tell my 19-year-old self, budget. Be kind to yourself. Learn self-care and self-love. Yes, all of those are good. They really are, Lynn Sakers. Um, There's a lot of things I could have done differently in my life. But again, I'm not sure I would change anything. I really, really am happy with who I am and happy with how my life has gone overall. There are a couple of things I'm not real thrilled with. But for the most part, I think I, think I would be happy with who I am. I think I am happy with who I am. Let's see. Linksaker says, I absolutely love YNAB for budgeting. I've tried different types of budgeting, and I swear it's the best method. Tell us what YNAB budgeting is, Lynx. I don't even know it. You don't inhale with cigars and pipes, right? Is that true, or have I heard? No, Casey, my dad said he never inhaled with his pipe. He just mostly kept it to chew on, and he liked the flavor that the taco left in his mouth. Um, but he said he didn't inhale it, so I really can't tell you. Iron Firehorse has been at it for over 40 years. No one else in the family smoked in Scotland, but it was big when I got into it in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how people get into it. For my, Dave said, for my part, I had not made all the mistakes and poor choices I did. I never would have met Kate. In the long run, ain't much I'd change even if I could. That's the same way I feel about it. YNAB stands for you need a budget. Ah, oh, that's a cool thing. I'd never even heard of that before. Iron Firehouse depends what you have in your pipe, Casey. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. I, you'd have to tell me about that, Iron Firehorse. <laughs> Let's see. McCoy's Oak Hill Farm. The one thing I have learned that I would tell my younger self is listen to your intuition and not others who try to influence one's decision by pushing a person to what they think is right. McCoy, that is a great piece of wisdom. Uh, you can listen to other people. You can hear their opinions, their ideas, but you should make your own decisions. You should base them on what you think is right. 
what you've learned is right, how you feel that the information you're getting fits with your belief system. Me personally, if it fits with the Bible, I pretty much stick with it, but not always because sometimes I don't understand it. So yeah, that's a very good, good way of thinking of it. Okay, see, you're getting all kinds of really import, important wisdom here. I hope you're taking notes. Let's see. Lynx Acres says the four rules of YN, YNAB is, one, give every dollar a job. Two, embrace your true expenses. Three, roll with the punches or be flexible. And four, age your money. I think I would have to add one more to that. That would be five, and that would be remember charity, whether your charity is through your church, which is mine, or through uh, an organization that meets the needs of those in need. I think you have to remember to give to others. Uh, that's important to me anyway. Um, Casey, have you got your pencil and paper out? <laughs> Let's see. I sure am. A lot of good quality advice here. And you are an amazing person to be interested in and taking advantage of the advice of those this much older than you at your age. When I was your age, I really didn't want advice from anybody older than me, which is a shame because I had a lot of really smart people around me. But yeah, it, it's, it's amazing that someone your age is interested in the wisdom from the elders. Let's see. Links Acres, they have charity in it? Oh, okay. I didn't, from the descriptions, I wasn't sure. Iron Firehorse, exactly. I'm dirt poor, but always managed to give a little. Iron Firehorse, I was too. I lived at or below the poverty line for most of my adult life. But to me, giving was important enough that I managed to do it most of the time, no matter what. So I, there are always people that are less fortunate, always people that are more needy. And I honestly believe, now let me put it to you this way. I tried to always give at least 10% of my income to the church. And I found through the years that I could do more for myself and my family with the 90% left over than I could if I kept 100% of it to myself. So I really think that's very, very important. Let's see, Casey. Let's see, wait a minute. Let me see. KC says, Iron Fire Horse, you and me both, I must tithe more often. Um, tithing is something that's a very personal decision, KC. Um, I know if God had it his way, everyone would give a minimum of 10%. I know traditional Jews had to give what added up to be almost 36% of their income yearly. I personally think at minimum 10% is important. And like I said, I could do more with the 90% I had left than I ever could with the full 100%. And I felt like I was robbing God when I didn't give him his 10%. So it's important. Uh, Iron Firehorse says it's important to her because others have helped her. Same here. Same here. Link Sakers, for me, it's not so much save, save, stave. YNAB encourages saving with a purpose. So have a car maintenance category, a home maintenance category, car insurance, vacation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's that's the way I do my savings as well. Bandanogramma says, Amen, Kate, raising seven kids on a low salary. We found the same to be true. The Lord provides when we trust him. That's absolutely right, Grandma. Um, I've always found that God provided whatever I needed. I have never not had a roof over my head. I have never not had anything to eat. I have always been able to, maybe not right the day they were due, but I was always been able to pay my bills eventually. So God provides for us no matter what. Freaky Geek, hello, it's good to see you here. I'm so glad you got here. And Anna Lynn came too. Hi, good to have you here too. We're talking about all manner of things right now. We're talking about money. We're also talking about um, giving, looking back and giving your younger self wisdom based on what you've lived to help yourself live a better life. So please feel free to join in. 
You're never late as long as you got here while we're on, Anna Lynn. So please join us and we're glad you made it. Hope all are well and enjoying the weekend. Thanks, Freaky. I am definitely enjoying my weekend. Stringfield Ridge Farms. Hello, Stringfield Ridge. I'm so glad you joined us. It's good to see you. Ah, Duncan 1900 found you too. That's great news. Um, Bandana Grandma, you said you raised seven children on a small income. I didn't have seven children. I only had two, but I had an extremely small income. My husband at the time did not help with the income. He was too much of a dreamer. He didn't create much income. So I supported the family and it was difficult, but we made it. God always managed to give us what we had to have. So I agree with you. Let's see, Bandana. Bandana Grandma is saying, Praise the Lord for those faith videos. It was all his doing, both the miracles and the inspiration to share those stories. I agree. Uh, Link Sakers, Nick True mapped out money on YouTube, has a lot of really in-depth videos on using it. Also, YNAB has a channel with lots of info. They have very good support on many platforms. I think I'm done with two kids. Uh, Link Sakers, I, um, I started off wanting a dozen. I wanted 12 children. When I was growing up, I had three sisters. I had a friend who had 13 brothers and sisters. She was one of 14. And I wanted a huge family. I saw the way they worked things together. They always accomplished so much, everything. I really, really wanted it. But when I became pregnant with my second child, it was also discovered that I had cancer. And at the time, the doctor wanted to end the pregnancy and do a complete hysterectomy. I would not allow it. I said, no, I want this child. I won't allow you to do that. So they watched me very closely, carried, took care of my health during those times. And when they delivered her, they did the hysterectomy then. So my biological children were two. I have a lot of children of the heart out there. I don't. I can't even count the number of kids that called me mom when all of mine were in and out of the house. But I had two biological children, and that was a blessing from heaven. It truly was. YNAB, did you find out what YNAB is, Freaky Geek? Yes, you did. Okay, good. Let's see. Stringfield, I was a widow raising five daughters alone until Lee came along. I know God sent him. I am glad to hear that. I know God sent David to me, too. It was amazing. It truly was. Um, five daughters is quite a few to raise alone. Um, thank goodness you had God who provided, and that's important. Bandana, one of our son's friends, an only child, told me he decided to have a large family because he loved being around ours. He has five so far. I told him, don't blame me when they become teenagers. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Bandana Grandma. Um, I have always been more um, empathetic with and more and happier to be around teenagers than any other age. Um, I love infants. I told my mom one time, if I could take children at age two and put them in a barrel and seal them in until they became 15, that would be my ideal. I love kids in their late teenage years. They're becoming real people, and it's just wonderful to go through that with them. Um, like I said, I've got more kids at the heart than I can even count, and most of them came to me as teenagers. Lynx Acre says, I will say it can be difficult to figure it out at first because it really encourages you to look at the use. Oh, you're talking about money again. Iron Firehorse, you like the idea of sealing the kids in, huh? You can feed them through a little hole in the side, you know, so they work out. <laughs> oh, no. No, freaky geek. No. Kid, kids, teenage kids gives people trouble. They never gave me trouble, I'll put it that way. Um, I had a lot of teenagers in and out of my house, and, and I just absolutely adored every one of them. Uh, my house was the one they came to when they got in trouble. Mine, 
funny enough, my house is the one their parents came to when they got in trouble. Not when the kids got in trouble, but when the parents got in trouble. Um, I used to say I was running some kind of a, a hotel for troubled people for a while there. I had adults and kids both coming to my house and staying and, and being loved and cared for until they were back on their feet. So, yep. Let's see. Bandana Grandma, I would have traded you my five daughters. I'd raise them until age 12. Then you could have had them from 13 to 20. Of course, I'm kidding. But, oy vey, we went through a real stuff. Yeah, me too. Me too. Lynx Acres, I originally wanted four kids, but I've done it too. Hey, when you got what you what you should have, you know it. You know it, Lynx Acres, and I agree. Stringfield, I like the little ones. I would put them in a barrel at 11. <laughs> I guess there's a barrel out there for everybody, huh? <laughs> Freaky Geek, life with kids is a roller coaster ride, good or bad. I agree. <laughs> Iron Fire Horse says, she loves children, parboiled. Yes. Who was it? Mae West, wasn't it, that said, um, I love children, especially with a little bit of ketchup and mustard or something like that. That was always funny for me. See, bandana grandma is the same. David said the first 10 years with my kids are great. After that, it kind of went south. With my own two children, I didn't ever have a bad time with them. With other people's children, because they weren't trained the way mine were, I had a lot of problem with them until they become teenagers. Then I didn't expect them to do anything. I was just thrilled when they did something. Um... I was born in China. I got adopted by Dutch parents when I was one year old. Oh, well, congratulations. Now, are you still in China or are you in Holland now, Anna Lynn? Or where are you for that matter? Uh, Lynx Acres, I find it's very difficult time of my life to videos. I have a six month old and a two year old. You know, Lynx, um, I don't know how some people feel about it, but I would love to see a video of just your kids playing. I really would, or helping you with things. Set up a camera off at a distance and just, you know, show them helping you cook or something. I don't know. You have to be careful with that. Oh, Bandana Grandma says that might have been W.C. Field. That's who it was. Thank you. I could not remember. I was thinking it was Mae West, but you're right. It was W.C. Fields who said that. Iron Fire Horse says baked and stuffed is good, too. <laughs> oh, we are so bad. Shame on us. KC says, Anna Lynn, that's pretty cool. I was born in South Africa, but I live in New Zealand. I can speak some Africans and Netherlands. I can speak one language, and that's Texan. I don't speak English. I don't speak Spanish. I speak a smattering of Spanish. I don't speak anything but Texan. And y'all just have to deal with me because I don't know how to learn anything else. I've tried. It hasn't worked. String Ridge Farm says, this is a regular time for you, so I'll put it on my list of... Thank you, Stringfield. Yes, I start at 1 o'clock Central Time. We've Actually, I started today about 10 minutes early. I just looked down and it's 2 o'clock. I'm going to have to give let's give y'all back your time. Freaky Geek says, give each child a camera and say, go play. Hey, that's not a bad idea either. Casey, you're learning Texas just by listening to me. Well, that's a good way to do it. But I will tell you, Casey... Both of my parents were from Massachusetts, and they were both English teachers, so you don't get a lot of straight English, uh, Texas from me because I still say words like business instead of bidness, and around Texas, bidness is what you do, B-I-D-N-E-S-S. -S. Well, folks, oh, no problem, Dave. Um, it is 2 o'clock. I have loved seeing you all. Thank you so much, so much for being here and joining us. Thank you for all of your friendship and your wisdom. You younger guys, thank you for coming and letting us enjoy you as well. I hope I see you next week. In the meantime, I'm going to try and put out some videos. You take care, and I'll see you later. Bye. God bless.